Okay, so we've got our flush mount jack here. And what we're going to do is you can see how deep this thing sits. Uh, pretty deep. And, you know, it, it's got a fairly big thread on it. So, I mean, you could have, you know, your ledge right here. Or you can have it, you know, up here. But you just got to make sure you leave enough thread to get the, uh, the lock washer and the uh, nut on there. But... Looking at this, if we have our tone pod here and we have the controls facing in this way, we should be okay to put our jack right here. So we're going to assume that um, our control cavity is going to look something along the lines of, got to have a flat part here in order to attach this. Uh, You know, we're just going to fashion one here. It uh, doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Have it come across like this. Like that. And maybe even like this or something. You know, I like to get a little creative with these. So uh, I'm not going to, you know, come up with a definite with a definite design at this stage. Um, I'll probably end up designing something that'll, you know, kind of fit with the uh, theme of the actual instrument. But we've got a basic idea of where we want to be with it. So now that we got this uh, channel laid out here for the electronics, we can go ahead and uh, lay this one out as well. Um, because I know that I'm going to be coming to at least here with my... Um, electronics cavity I know that I can pretty much route a channel straight down from the corner of this of this uh, pickup cavity so we can just route another one right here okay so that's out of the way lined up ready to go uh, we got one more that we got to do and that's for the um, it's for the battery box so we got to we got to distinguish first um, how far back our tremolo is going to sit. So we're going to grab another one of our templates here, our tremolo templates. Okay, here's one here. So this one here, so I haven't even used this yet. This again is for a six-string tremolo, but it's. Um, it doesn't matter because we're going to be measuring from the from front to back. So um, you know the measurements for a six and seven string Floyd rows are the same from front to back and, and everything. So these will be more than acceptable to use for this layout purpose. So the way this template works is these two holes right here. Um, they're supposed to represent your. Um, your post holes so whenever you screw this onto the body to drill this uh, you use these screws screw holes from here to uh, as pilot holes for your the posts for your for your bridge so what we're going to do is we are going to take this and we're just going to line it up so that our line distinguishing where our posts are going to be we've already marked that so we're just going to line it up with these holes here and this doesn't have to be completely centered or anything the idea is to make sure you have it uh, your line completely at on the center of the holes okay we're looking good so we're just going to go ahead and trace that like I said the uh, the width and the positioning this way doesn't mean anything right now Okay, so we got that out of the way. Um, now this here is going to be our template for the back. And the way these are lined up is, if you look here, when you drill your pilot hole, which would be up in this corner here, so let's just mark that so we know. You would drill a pilot hole and then you would route this part out. And then they want you to line that up with this inside edge here. That's looking pretty good right there. And I'm just going to mark that line there. So I know that on the back 
that's where the spring cavity stops. So I, you know, I'll, I'll take into account another lip there because we're going to be putting a, a cover plate, a recessed cover plate on there. So I'll say to there even, but it can go anywhere between here. So we'll say it's right about here, you know, give or take. It's about that big. I've got it. Uh, I've got it inside, but uh, the size really isn't important right here. We just what we'll do is we'll run our channel like this, and we'll go extra long out this way to make sure that we hit this cavity. And we'll do the same here. We'll go extra long in this way to make sure that we hit this cavity. I'm going to show you how I'm going to determine the depth of the bit. Um, these routes are going to be sitting right under the 3 16 uh, top. So I'm going to have to make them fairly deep in order to get to the bottom of the actual um, pickup routes and stuff like that. Um, just for these ones here. Uh, this one here it's not very important because we want that to run under there and it just needs to be a small, small channel because uh, we just have a little, uh, two tiny little wires that run through here, um, you know, to power up the LEDs. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a measurement off of my pickups, or off of my uh, drawing, excuse me, to determine the exact depth of uh, these two pockets. Okay, so after uh, taking some measurements, we've determined that uh, the overall depth of, um, of our pickup cavities are going to be half inch. So... Um, this is going to give us plenty of room here because um, our uh, our back our spring cavity for our tremolo is going to be three quarters of an inch deep. So we have about an inch and three eighths here, and that's not including our top. With that, with our inch and three eighths plus the three sixteenths for the top, um, we're looking at about an inch and uh, nine sixteenths. So about an inch and a half. So with our three quarters plus another half inch, that'll give us an inch and a quarter. That gives us a good quarter inch of a material uh, between this pocket and the back rear spring cavity. So that's plenty. Um, and the half inch will give us enough uh, you know, depth that we'll be able to raise and lower these pickups as much as we need to. So we know we, we need our half inch minus three sixteenths, which is going to leave us with five sixteenths of an inch. So we need we know we need to take this area and this area down five sixteenths. So we'll uh, set up a router bit, uh, just a straight cutting bit, probably a quarter inch I would assume, uh, maybe three eighths, and uh, do these small two areas here, and then uh, this one here we're only going to do it about eh, well, we might as well do it three sixteenths as well, or five sixteenths. Okay, so as you can see here, we've. Uh, routed our channel for a battery box uh, leading from the battery box into the uh, control cavity and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this one here now and what I've done is I've just uh, set a couple of runners for my router to sit on top of um, just because of this uh, because of where the the next steps up here uh, we want to be able to have a nice flat surface to run the router on so what I need to do is I need to take my uh, 5 16 um, of an inch that I've already determined that I need to make these uh, channels here and I need to add the the height of these rails as well and they are exactly 9 sixteenths so we're looking at 7 eighths of an inch so what we'll do is we will set our bit here to 7 eighths of an inch uh, run this channel and then we'll just move these uh, these rails will line them up with this piece here that we got to route and we'll route that piece and we should be uh, at our proper depth so um, we'll do that and we'll come back and have a look at the results okay so we've got all of our uh, um, tunnels routed for our electronics here I'm just gonna peel this uh, two-sided tape up off of here from uh, from those guide rails that we were using and uh, the next step we got to do before we think about working on the top here is uh, the, the area here on the uh, on the neck where the body meets up with the neck 
Um, we're going to have to actually cut this to the true line that it's actually going to be the finished edge because when we uh, when we take this uh, book match top that we're going to do and we cut this area out we want it to be a very nice perfect fit um, so in order to do that we're going to have to cut to our actual lines here and I've, I've uh, marked them out already I've put our uh, I've put our fretboard on top of here lined everything up and uh, marked the lines this was with the binding included of course so uh, make sure that you know when you're lining all this stuff up you have uh, the bound fretboard that you're using to uh, make these lines so we're gonna grab a nice sharp chisel because this goes pretty much to nothing right here and uh, we're just gonna grab a nice sharp chisel and we're gonna work away at this and uh, try and get it as flat or as straight as possible and um, then we'll be able to start working on the top okay so I grabbed me a couple chisels here and uh, I sh you know I sharpened them right away here uh, just to make sure we have a nice beautifully uh, sharp chisel here uh, that's one thing that's very important when you're working with the chisels you got to make sure you got a sharp one okay and I'm going to use my widest one here to get me started here and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up here on our line right about here this is gonna we don't we just want to make a line here to where we're going to be actually taking material away and then we'll go back and we'll shave it off we're looking pretty good right about there okay you can see how sharp this chisel is it's already but even barely even putting any pressure on it, it's uh, wanting to take material off here so just try and keep the chisel nice and perpendicular to the surface of the guitar and then just start chiseling this stuff away And it doesn't matter if we have a little bit of tear out here in this area because this is all going to be, uh, you know, it's still got to be shaped and everything. So all of that is uh, going to end up being scrap anyways in that area. So I'm just going to continue on here. Try and get our line as straight as possible. It's looking pretty good there. Just kind of chop these off here. And we're looking for a nice square edge here. That's uh, one of the more important aspects of this. That's looking pretty good there. So Maybe just a little bit more off here. And it looks like I think I'm far enough. I'll just go a little bit farther just to be safe here. That should be good. I'm gonna switch over to the other side here, I think, and uh, do the other side now. The other side's not gonna require as much because uh, we have a fairly deep cutaway here. In fact, it's barely going to require any at all. It's going to be a matter of shaving this and getting it on that line there. Okay, that's going to be all that we're going to need to do there. So, nice and square to the top of the instrument looking pretty good there uh, good way to do it is just to take a straight edge run it along here and see how you're looking looking good there and we're looking like we're a little bit out here I'll take a bit more off this area here You know, it, it's going to take a little time to get it exactly straight because we're going like, uh, like I said, we're going to, we're going right to nothing here. So, you know, anytime you're tapering off that that deep, it's going to take a little while. And that looks pretty good there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our top 
and uh, first thing we're going to do on our top is we're going to cut this portion out here uh, for the neck and uh, we're going to do that before we actually attach the pieces together um, reason being is because this tapers inwards it'll just be easier to get this to, to fit nice and tight you know we can kind of dry fit it and just keep uh, shaving it back till we get it where we want it and then once we get it to where we want it we can take it and glue it together and then it will slide uh, it'll pop right on here after we get the lamination done okay so as you can see here we've got um, our armrest marked out here we got a line uh, signifying where it's going to uh, where the slope's going to start and we've got a line signifying uh, where we want to get to um, on the side profile here. We're going to be using two tools for this. First one is we're going to take most of the material down with this and this is just an angle grinder with a um, I can't remember what these discs are called uh, I don't know but they take that material very very fast so if you are going to use one of these be extremely careful and uh, make sure you know uh, where you're taking material off at all times uh, because like I said this thing works really quick and uh, if you go too far with it then you've gotten too far and there's not a whole lot you can do about it so we're gonna take it down close to the line with this and try and keep it as straight as possible uh, with our angle then we're gonna take it even closer to the line with uh, with a rasp here and uh, once we get it right almost right to the line maybe even to the line but just to the top of it then we'll take uh, you know sandpaper starting with 80 grit up to 120 we'll probably go all the way up to uh, 220 or 320 and uh, to make it nice and smooth and give us a good gluing surface um, I'm gonna wear a full face shield using this thing because another thing this thing will do is it will make an absolute mess of your shop in a hurry and uh, there's stuff flying everywhere so you gotta at least make sure your face is protected um, you know the shop you can clean up you can't get your eye back so uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab a face shield before we do this and uh, we'll come back and have a look at our progress I'm gonna have to shut the camera down because this is like I said a messy process so we'll come back and uh, we'll see how it looks when we're done okay when I said that uh, grinding wheel works fast I certainly meant it uh, I've only been working at this for about five minutes and I've already got it uh, all sanded to where I want to be uh, you'll notice right here there's just a little uh, mark from our rasp um, I'm not going to worry about that because we have a cap going on this and it doesn't you know it doesn't extend to the uh, to the side of the piece so I'm not worried about it I'll go grab that top and uh, we'll go through that process